So the picture that emerges is that fitting power laws to empirical data is tricky business. Taking a log-log plot, finding the slope of the best fit line, and using that to estimate the exponent seems like a reasonable thing to do, but can give very wrong answers. Much better is to use a maximum likelihood estimator. We've also seen that there are other distributions, non-power law distributions, that can appear very similar to power laws and can be difficult to tell apart. So we need to treat this question of power laws and empirical data carefully. As I wind down this unit, I want to take a step back and consider a few broader and more general issues. First is that power laws are an example of a long-tailed distribution. And a long-tailed distribution generally is taken to be any distribution that decays uh, less slowly than an exponential distribution. So power laws are one example, but log normals and are another, and there are lots of different long-tailed examples. So sometimes that may be the only point of interest. Does your data have a long tail or not? And that's more important to establish than um, the exact form. Is it a power law or something similar to a power law? Um, long tail distributions have this property, right? They've got this long tail. So even though large events are unlikely, they're not unthinkably likely. And so they pose different questions when thinking about risks and extreme events. So in some settings, distinguishing between power laws and other long tail distributions might not be that important. And as with lots of things in science, it depends on context and it depends on the question that you're trying to ask. What are you trying to ask or figure out about your data? Are you just trying to say there appears to be some scaling relationship over this certain range? Or is it important to what you're doing to say that yes, it really is a power law? And we've encountered this issue before when we talked about fractals. So mathematical fractals are these perfect things that don't exist in the real world. In the real world, self-similarity is never exact. And more importantly, self-similarity doesn't exist across an infinite number of scales, but only over a relatively small amount. So when is it useful to say something is a fractal, and when is it not? Things are more or less fractal-like and whether or not it's useful to view something as a fractal depends on the context. I think, I think the same thing is true often for power laws. Um, rather than geometric self-similarity, we're looking at statistical self-similarity and scaling across, uh, and some similarity across scales. Um, how exact do we need to be for that? Uh, how exact does that scaling relationship need to be for it to be noteworthy? Again, that would depend on the questions you're trying to ask and on the particular context. We see similar issues in um, non-power law situations, so even like linear regression. So here is um, just some random data, and you can fit a line through it. And uh, if you do this, I forget what the slope is, but you'll find a statistically significant trend, it's just a, a linear trend. And I think the R squared value is something like 20, uh, 0 0.2, 0 0.25. So it ex doesn't explain a lot of the variation. But there's something going on here. And in some settings, um, sci scientific or social scientific settings, noticing that trend could be a, a really important thing. In other settings, maybe it's not such an, such an interesting trend. But for sure, you wouldn't look at this and say, this is a line. Right? And there's just way too much noise around that. Um, and that doesn't mean that the slope then becomes me meaningless or that the fit becomes meaningless. But the point I'm trying to make is just because you do a linear fit doesn't mean you're asserting that your data is a line. Similarly, you can do a power law fit. You can get a pretty good answer or even a mediocre answer that still might be interesting. But that would be a, that's a very different thing than asserting that your data is a power law. If you wanted to um, make that claim, I think, well, that's a much harder claim to substantiate. You would need to look at goodness of fit tests, and you'll need to compare alternatives, log normals, exponentials, stretched exponentials, and so on. And maybe then you could rule out those or say um, the data would show, the statistics would show that, yes, a power law really is a much better fit. And then you, you can make a stronger claim about your data, that it really is a power law, as opposed to saying, 
gee, there's a pattern here of regularity, some of which can be explained by a scaling relationship. So again, context, um, context matters. A few other remarks. Um, one, also relevant is what else we know about the system. So I've been talking about data analysis and statistics here. But of course, when we do science, we're not purely doing data analysis and statistics. We know other things about what we're studying. And so in particular, in some cases, there might be a really good reason to expect a power law relationship. There might be some theorem, perhaps from first principles, that's very well understood and established that suggests we'll see a power law relationship. In other settings, maybe we have no such theory to guide us. And in that case, we'll want to keep a more open mind. So again, this question of is it a power law or is it power law like, how much, um, is surely going to be informed by the other information we have about, uh, about the system. Lastly, um, there are some cases, of course, when the exact functional form of the distribution would matter. One of those for sure is if we want to do extrapolation. So what I mean by that is, let's say we have a set of data and we are fitting to a power law or a log normal or something. And again, the, the purpose of, your, of the scientific work matters. If the purpose of the scientific work is to estimate the frequency of even more rare events, more extreme events, then um, you'll get very different answers depending on the functional form you assume for your data. If it's power law, log normal, or something else, it can give you very different answers. And that sort of makes sense because you're rather than let the data speak for itself, you need to make a model of data and then see what the data is doing way out here on the extremes. So in some settings, whether or not something is a power law exactly or more or less or not at all matters a great deal. And in extrapolation, that would be um, one such case. So again, the bottom line is we've been doing lots of data analysis and statistics in this unit, but we shouldn't use, uh, lose track of the science that we're trying to do, the questions we're trying to answer, and the things we already know or think we know about the systems that we're studying.